tiny peninsula cut off from the rest of Boston by the old shipping lanes in Boston Harbor. When you're in Southie, well, it's Boston, but it ain't. Traditionally wary, if not actively hostile to outsiders, the residents here have always prided themselves on doing whatever they have to do to get by. It's a hard-working part of town. community where families tended to be large and tough guys in no short supply, the ability to defend yourself was seen as a definite plus. Peter Welsh trains old and young alike in the grand tradition of dealing punishment out and when necessary, taking it on the chin with style. So is Southie tough or is that overstated? Is that a product of the movies or? No, 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 it's tough. It's, 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 you don't even have to think about that. It's, it's tough. You grew up in a neighborhood where being able to handle yourself means something, you know, because you may have to stick up for your three younger brothers or you may have to, you know, defend yourself walking down the street at some point. With Peter is boxing legend Tommy Connors, mentors at a Southie institution that goes back 80 years. At, at some point, everybody who's ever come through Southie you, you at least came to the fights. You started in that program. You, you may buy each other a beer, you may crack each other across the face at some point. But or both, uh, maybe. They, or both. Do you think it came from the, the, we must defend ourselves from outsiders, or I have to descend, defend myself from the tough bastard who lives across the street? I'd say both. <laughs> Before you even get to the, the boxing program, you may have had four fights on your way. So by the time you get there, you're primed and ready to go. Coaches here teach everything from traditional stand-up Queensberry rules boxing to mixed martial arts. It started as a community center to keep kids off the streets, but some who train here go on to full-fledged careers. So where exactly did you grow up? Uh, South Shore. Hang South Shore. Where does he come from, though? Because I don't really know. I hang mean, him, tell him. me the truth. Yeah, but what, what's it like? Fishing. So they fish. The fishermen are tough. It's on the shore. There's a beach there. It's so you're, you're a little more laid back. A little bit. You think should I should I beat up the smaller kid or should I just go to the beach? Kind of a thing. Not necessarily my thought process, but yeah. Okay, we know by now that my friend from the mean streets of Hingham here did not grow up working a speed bag between bong hits. But Tommy Connors started his training at 15. He's fought over 100 professional fights and holds the Boston Garden record for fastest KO ever. 13 seconds, including the count. The greatest boxer that ever lived. I'd say Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson. Not police. Jose oh, no. Napolis. Jose Napolis. Not Ali. Uh, no. You know who was my hero always was? Cool. Chuck Wepner. Oh, what a chin on Chuck. <laughs> the bleeder. The bio, his nickname was the Bion Bleeder. These guys know everything. And while reconnoitering the premises, Mike and I chat with various persons knowledgeable in the intersection between elements generally believed to be criminal and the world of boxing. In seconds, people in a position to know laughably tell us the inside scoop on most of the enduring question marks of boxing history. We have found the answer to how did Sugar Ray Leonard beat Marvin Hagler? Also the Duran Leonard no mas fight. And the, the Benny Kid Perret Emil Griffith fight. Oh, wait a minute. Magic punch. We gotta find Ali Liston. Oh, we didn't get that. We gotta get right. Hang on. Right back. <laughs>